Hi everyone, today I'll show you how you can use the flight recorder in combination with Payara server to detect why your application or your request is responding slowly. So a few words about the flight recorder itself. Uh, it is designed to collect the diagnostic and profiling data of the JVM or the events that you have defined yourself. It, uh, the project started as part of the uh, J-Rocket VM, uh, initially designed by PEA and later on uh, developed by Oracle. It has a long history, it's not a new project. Uh, it has more than 10 years uh, in used in production, so it is optimized for the low overhead in production that you need, so that when you are running, when you're collecting the data, the impact on the application is as minimal as possible. So you should have that flight recorder always on, just like on an airplane, so that it gathers your JVM parameters continuously. And if you need them, then you can inspect them to find out what uh, is going on inside the JVM. Uh, since you have a very coherent data model, uh, where you can link all the events uh, based on a timestamp, you can have a good picture of what is going on uh, during the execution of your query. It is available on every JDK 11 uh, binary. And if you are running the Zulu JDK from Azul, it is uh, also available for JDK 8 as of the version 8.35, which corresponds with the update 202 of the Open JDK. So let's have a quick look how it uh, works internally. Uh, so when the flight recorder is active, it captures all the data from the different uh, subsystems like threads, uh, garbage collection, compiler, um, etc. And it puts that information in a um, global in-memory buffer. Uh, it first put in memory so that the uh, impact on the JVM itself is as uh, minimal as possible so that it does not disrupt your execution of your application. And later on, that memory buffer is dumped to disk to, um, to keep all the required information so that it is not lost when you need it. They are circular buffers, so that means that um, when you do not ask for a recording, uh, a recording to a file, that the oldest information is overwritten again, but you always have then the latest information, so you should get a dump um, as soon as you see that there is an issue, so that you have the time uh, period uh, of the issue captured within the dump file. So, Let's uh, have it uh, a go. Uh, let's see how it works in uh, certain situations uh, in combination with the Payara server. So I'm here on the command line and I am running the Payara server on a OpenJDK 11 runtime. And I have installed um, a little helper program on the server and so that I can test out a few things as we have deployed the flight application and with that application I can put some stress on the, uh, on the CPU and the memory. You can start uh, the flight recorder um, immediately when you start the JVM with a uh, JVM parameter or you can start it um, later on when it is uh, running your JVM already. And um, starting it here um, can be done by using that uh, JCMD program of the Java uh, suite, where you say that the flight recorder needs to be started um, for the AS main program, which is then the Payara server. If you do not know the name or the program ID of it, uh, you can find it out with the JCMD program itself without any parameters. And then you can see that I have here that, um, that Payara server running um, as one of my Java programs. So let's um, start then the uh, flight recorder. Uh, so the flight recorder is started. The default size of the circular buffer is 250 megabyte. And now I can put a little bit stress on the CPU and the memory. So in the background now, 
during five seconds. Um, there is a lot of computation going on, a lot of memory allocations and um, garbage <coughs> collections. Um, after uh, the certain time uh, that, that you want to inspect that, uh, that information, you can ask for then that dump file, um, where you can say dump me the file uh, in a certain uh, file name for that, um, for that main program. And he says that he has uh, written here now that uh, 1.4 megabyte file uh, at this uh, certain location. This file is a binary file and it is uh, self-containing, so all the information about which type of events um, are recorded, uh, what those events mean, etc., etc., they are all stored within the file itself. So you can uh, inspect that file with any kind of um, compatible um, program, uh, including um, a GUI, as you will see later on. If you have installed the um, an, an open JDK or a, uh, or a JDK in general, which um, also contains the flight recorder um, command line tools, then you can inspect that um, from the command line. Here in the, in the other window, I have um, a JDK 8 Zulu running. Uh, so this is one of the versions which contains all the um, binaries for that flight recorder and so, so to analyze that flight recorder and then you have that um, GFR program available where you can ask for a summary um, of that recording that um, we have written and then you see that you get a list of all the events uh, because uh, the flight recorder works with events all the events that it has um, found in that uh, dump file and it goes from uh, garbage collection information um, to, um, to threat information, uh, to when, when the threats are, are uh, parked. Um, there is also the CPU load um, events available. So all that, um, all that kind of information can inspect it from the command line. But of course, it is easier to inspect it with GUI. So that's why I have uh, Zulu Mission Control here running. And I can open that same recording file uh, and then uh, you will see that you get a lot of more interesting info. On the main page, it immediately gives you some automated analysis results and you see that there um, are already three um, issues uh, mentioned. Uh, the first one that is there is are a lot of processes, uh, competing processes running. Uh, that was because my um, program that I uh, executed uh, on the Payar server um, executed a lot of threads, uh, created a lot of threads, created a lot of uh, CPU um, processing there, so he detects that here immediately. Um, I explicitly limited the amount of memory which was available um, to the server, so he detects that my free memory is a bit low, so I should uh, have given more memory. And also the other um, important factor here is that um, there was a lot of garbage collection activity. Uh, there was n even four gigabytes per second, uh, which was freed by the garbage collection. Um, so, which is um, a lot of the, a lot of uh, memory that is uh, created and uh, removed again. But you can go more in details. Uh, for instance, here um, you can get an overview. Here uh, you see that the CPU rises up till uh, almost eighty percent. So that means that there was uh, during a certain period. Uh, the period that uh, that that the uh, the five seconds that the stress testing was running, that there was a lot of CPU activity, and you also see the, all those uh, orange uh, lines here that there were a lot of uh, garbage collection pauses. Uh, there was the JVM um, halts uh, that your program is stopped for performing the garbage collection. And if you see that uh, there is a lot of uh, times that there was. Um, some kind of garbage collection and uh, the heap uh, of course here uh, fluctuates 
very rapidly between the minimum and the maximum values, uh, several hundred times here, um, due to that memory stress uh, uh, code that I executed. You can look. You can have a look at the um, at the details. Uh, for instance, for the threads, uh, you see that um, you have information about the thread CPU load, and that you have um, several threads. Uh, you see, uh, even uh, thirty or forty threads, which takes a lot of CPU, uh, each taking one percent of the um, of, of the CPU, which is which is a lot in this case. So if you um, name your threads um, wisely uh, within your program, then um, of course you get information about um, what the thread was doing, so that then you can investigate um, why there was uh, so much uh, CPU used by that uh, by that thread. And the same goes for the garbage collection. Uh, you see here that you have um, twenty one thousand events uh, related to the garbage collection. And that, uh, that you have here um, a lot of pause events, uh, that means that there was almost 500 times a garbage collection um, executed during um, that period that the recording uh, ran, uh, which is a lot, and although it is not taking a lot of time here, because uh, the memory allocations that I did were very easy, just some object that I dumped on the heap, but um, of course, if there is more complex um, graphs that need to be analyzed, that means that um, a lot more time will be taken to execute that garbage collection, uh, um, especially for very large heaps. Uh, in, uh, this was a uh, very small um, size uh, here. So as we have seen in the previous example, you can get a lot of information of what's going on within the JVM, but you did not um, make the link to your application so you do not know what uh, what went wrong for a certain um, request and that's where the creation of custom events uh, comes uh, handy and you have within the jdk um, a lot of classes and annotations available to create your own uh, event which uh, like uh, you have here an example the idea is that i have this event every time a certain uh, REST, uh, certain YAX-RS call is uh, executed by the server. So you create an event class uh, extending the event from the uh, flight recorder and you annotate it uh, with a certain name so that it uh, can be identified within that dump file. You can give some labels, categories, and descriptions, etc. Um, and I'm not interested in the entire stack trace, which um, um, resulted uh, when the event was created. Um, but I'll just put the name of the method uh, which performs that YAXRS um, request uh, in the event itself, as you will see later. The event has several fields, uh, fields uh, which identifies the event uh, to get information about the event, uh, like the method, uh, the Java method which was executed, the media type, um, the, the part, uh, the URL part, which uh, corresponds with the event query parameters, and you can even get the uh, response length and the response status, uh, so what is sent back to the client. This is just the event itself. Um, you can create that by using a container response and uh, a container request uh, filter where you create that event uh, when the request comes in and you start the event and you place that event on the request context so that you can um, capture it from there later on uh, when the result is sent back to the uh, to the requester, to the client, um, you can get that same event back and you fill in all the values uh, from the event uh, with all the useful information and then you commit that um, event to that circular buffer. So now we have um, some kind of flight recorder event every time 
there is an execution of a um, REST request to the server. I have here again my um, Payara server running uh, with the same application using that event which I described, uh, that custom event. And um, that means I can again start my flight uh, recording. And again, I can uh, perform some uh, request. I can perform a request to this endpoint and it, um, it is slowly. Uh, you will see that it takes uh, about 15 seconds to respond. So let's find out um, based on that flight recorder uh, dump file, um, what is the main cause uh, why it is uh, going that slowly. So it took uh, in total even 20 seconds. Uh, in fact, it was the calculation of a large uh, prime number. Um, but let's find out um, why it was slowly by um, creating that dump file of that re uh, for that recording. We close this one and we open the new file. And then you see that um, there are again a lot of processes and he does not mention uh, the automated analysis does not mention the garbage collection issue so that's already one indication uh, what kind of issue it could be and you see here that uh, during that period that uh, during that 20 seconds the um, request uh, was executing that the, the CPU was high and there are indeed some um, garbage collection events, but uh, less, um, way less than, um, than before. If we look at here at the event trees, um, you can see that here the garbage collection, there were now only 8,000 and not 21,000 as before, and even the recording period was a longer time. But you can see more, eh? you have here now that custom event and uh, it event took 20 seconds and you see that here also. So that custom event shows up now here between all the other events. And um, we can limit all our information uh, that we have in the recording to that period of uh, during that 20 seconds. So I can store that and set as uh, select focus. I show all the other ones and even on the other threads. So these are now all the events which are happening um, during that uh, period of that 20 seconds. And then you see that there were there was a call to um, two other um, yeah, 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 YAXRS um, endpoints. Um, you had the um, here uh, the same is here that network utilization. There was some network uh, access during that period. Uh, the processor uh, you have again that thread CPU load, and again you see very high CPU loads uh, for a number of threads, which clearly means uh, that my request was that slowly because there was a lot of CPU activity and a lot of. Uh, calculations uh, going on at that moment. Are there any garbage co collections go going on during the time? Yes, there are a few, but uh, as mentioned already, less, uh, a lot less than before. Uh, so based on that information, we can say that our application uh, was, um, was slow, uh, slow due to the fact that it uses a lot of CPU and that we have to look into um, a better way of creating that, uh, of calculating that prime value in this, uh, in this case. So I hope that you got a nice idea of what is possible with a flight recorder, how you can use it to monitor your application and to, to get an idea of what um, is the cause of your slow responses. Thank you for watching and um, have fun with all these Payara tools. Bye!